Hello and welcome to the ASA Advanced or SNAA CBT Nuggets series. What I'd like to do as we open this series up is talk about the big picture. Where are we going to go in the series? What kind of topics are going to be covered? What is the, the purpose and requirements of SNAA? Even talk a little bit about Cisco certification and how this fits into the big picture CCSP journey that you may be on. And then finally, I want to wrap up by looking at how can you get the most from this CBT Nuggets series. So let's start off with the big question. Why did Cisco create two certification exams for one firewall, the ASA? Well, simple answer is it's a big firewall. Really, they tried to integrate three appliances in one. They took the PIX firewall, the IPS appliance, and the VPN concentrator and kind of bundled it all in one box and called it the ASA. So there's a lot to it. And so the ASA Foundations, or SNA, uh, SNAF series, is enough to get you started and do what most administrators do on the ASA firewall. This series, the SNAA, or ASA Advanced, takes that all to the next level. The goal of this is not to show you something radically different or radically new from the SNAF series to where you're like, wow, that's, that's a feature I didn't even know existed. It's just to take all of the things that you saw and enhance it. And I, I, I say the same thing when I talk about, like, you know, going to the beginning, CCENT versus CCNA. I was like, well, what's, what's the difference? Am I going to see something radically new in CCNA that I didn't see in CCENT? Eh, probably not. You'll see some cool stuff. You'll be like, oh, wow, I didn't, I didn't know that was possible. That's, that's pretty cool. But you will not see anything radically different and totally mind-bendingly you know, mind different concepts. So in here, what, what you can expect to see is different things like unique situations for NAT and access lists. Whereas in SNAF, they talk about using NAT and access lists to accomplish core objectives. We'll talk about the same thing here, but now take it to the next level of, well, let's do some weird stuff with that in access list. You'll see more of a VPN focus, uh, but it's going to be far more on certificate-based systems, meaning in the SNAF, you talked about site-to-site -site VPNs, you talked about remote access VPNs, and you even got a little bit into the SSL VPN concepts. In here, we'll talk about all those same things, but now enhance them by using certificates and certificate authorities uh, to, to show a lot of the di you know different cool aspects of that. And also, in this series, a lot more focus on where things are going, and that's SSL VPNs. SSL VPNs are the, the future of where all VPNs are probably going to end up with, uh, and let me er, rewind back up, for remote access or user-based uh, VPNs. So we're going to have a lot of focus on how we can make those the best possible way, introducing things like Cisco Secure Desktop to uh, secure those remote workstations. Very, very cool concepts uh, with that. And then the big thing I want to bring up, and this is shocking. SNAA is completely ASDM focused. If you haven't seen it before, the ASDM is the graphic interface for managing a, a Cisco ASA appliance. Now, it's, uh, it's kind of weird. SNAF, very command line focused with some ASDM. Like, here's how you turn it on, here's how you can use it. But not so much of a focus on the GUI. In here, the only time we use the command line is to verify things, to check things, make sure they're working, do show commands, do debug commands, do some troubleshooting because that's what they want the command line for. But really, a lot of the configuration is moved to the GUI. Now, for me, I'm, I'm a command line junkie. I was almost taken aback when I started looking at this. I was like, what, what are they doing? What's Cisco thinking? Moving to a graphic interface focus rather than command line for, for nothing. I mean, I could see that for maybe the foundations, but, but the advanced? I mean, they, it's, it seems backwards. Well, what we're starting to see in this, uh, am I going to, this is the opening nugget. Uh, you're already going to get my opinion, but here it is. Cisco has started to put some stuff in the ASDM that you literally cannot do from the command line cannot. Meaning, uh, for example, if you want to start doing some of the tuning and tweaking of SSL VPNs, you cannot do it from the command line. You have to use the ASDM. Likewise, Cisco is realizing that a lot of their competitors out there are starting to come out with appliances that are not as good as the ASA. And, you know, of course, you can argue all day and competition, blah, blah, blah. But they're, they're just, frankly, they're, they're not as good. I've used some of them. But they're starting to beat the ASA, number one, because they're cheaper, because 
they're not as good. But number two, and the big one is, they've got a GUI. They've got a really good GUI that people don't have to really fully understand. They kind of hit next, next, and finish, and look at that. So Cisco said, that's it. We're, we're tired of getting you know kicked around by this, this equipment that's not as good uh, simply because people don't know how to use or aren't comfortable using a command line interface. So thus, we're starting to see a lot more ASDM focus. And in, the good, in a good way, uh, Cisco has begun stepping up the ASDM to where it is a very, very powerful interface. For years, Cisco has always been a non-graphic interface company. And if they did attempt a graphic interface, it was horrible. I'm not going to say any products like Cisco Works or anything, but it was just horrible. You know, anybody that's used, and I'll throw Cisco Works under the bus simply because I've heard many people who even work for Cisco throw Cisco Works under the bus. It's just not a good intuitive interface to work with because Cisco has said we are a command line company. This is, is what we do. But the competition has folk push them into creating really good graphic interfaces. So I think as you go through here, and it's gonna, you know, if you're a command line junkie like me, it's gonna take a little getting used to, but there really will be a lot of benefits to getting used to using the ASDM. And in the end, you will be able to move faster with the ASDM than you ever could using command line. So that wasn't too bad. I was able to get through that without getting too opinionated. Okay, okay, I can't help it. Yeah, I've got to throw my opinion out there. I think it's a mistake. <laughs> I think it's a huge mistake to put anything in the GUI that you can't do from the command line. There is now functions in the ASDM that is not possible to do from the command line interface. And I think it's a mistake. <sighs> I can't help it. I'm opinionated. But there it is. Well, let's let's uh, let's now move into uh, the certification world uh, and where where CC or, or SNAA fits in the in the grand picture of things. SNAA is part of the Cisco CCSP, the Security Professional Certification, and every and I will say everything is always changing certification wise. You know, as of right now, I'm sure this will be old news by time uh, by time you hear this, but in a couple months, Cisco is revising the entire CCNP track. That's the current big news. And this is as of the end of 2009. So, so everything's always changing. So I'm going to talk about CCSP as it stands today, but always check out that website down at the bottom of the screen so that you can uh, fill in the uh, rest of the story and make sure you get any updates. As it stands right now, uh, the CCSP looks something like this, to where you have three core exams, starting off with SNRS, which is really security on Cisco routers and switches, moving into SNAF, which is, I guess you could call it, the prerequisite to this series. Uh, it's the ASA Foundations, and then they have, of course, the IPS one below that. Um, first big question is, will you be completely lost in this series uh, if you don't have SNAF under your belt? Uh, I will say no, probably not. You do need to have a good understanding of the ASA, what it can do, uh, and you do have to have a good understanding of security in general. Um, but I think w even without SNAF, you'll be able to follow this pretty well. And I think a lot of that comes from the fact of the ASDM being brought into things. There's not a lot of prerequisite command line stuff that you have to know before you can configure things with the ASDM. Uh, that being said, I will say you will have a much better time uh, if you have gone through SNAF, so I definitely recommend it, but I would say it's not a hard, fast rule that you have to have that. Um, so SNAA, you can see down here, fits into the elective categories. You've got the uh, NAC appliance that they, they have as an elective, MARS, Monitoring Analysis and Response System, kind of a, a big picture puts everything together, uh, server-based appliance. Uh, and then you've got the SNAA, where we are right here, where it takes uh, the ASA to a whole nother level. So you pass one of those and you have you know, essentially your elective requirement fulfilled and you've got your CCSP. Um, so you can always click on any one of these and get all of the details about the exam if that's the direction you're going. Seeing 90 minutes, you've got the associate certification, the exam number that you'll need to register with, you know, how many questions are on the exam and so on. Uh, this, this does follow the typical model for certification exams and they do have all the topics broken down and that's actually how I built the courses around those topics. Um, but this, this does follow the, the typical uh, Cisco exam. You will see simulations. You will see uh, kind of drag and drop. It's very, uh, very um, uh, big picture scoping exam rather than can you memorize these 
facts and topics and multiple choice questions and so on. So it's very good. And that's why I'm, I, I love teaching the series. And I, I will tell you, uh, I always record the first nugget of a series last because I want to make sure I'm absolutely accurate in what I tell you is going to be in the series because it's, it's already done already. So what I can say is I love Cisco certification, Cisco certification exams because they are so real world. Meaning, they test you on things that you encounter in the real world and things that you'll need to know, uh, not just did you memorize all these facts from a, from a book. Uh, so throughout this series, what you will see is just constant, constant real world examples. Um, I, I, uh, I don't know where I mentioned it because it's, I've spent a long time recording this series. But as you go through here, you'll see that I have actually three ASA firewalls that we'll be setting up and configuring, two ASA 5510s, and one ASA 5505, which will give you the whole gamut of the field. We'll be doing site-to-site -site VPNs. We'll be doing remote access VPNs, setting up full SSL VPNs. And you'll, you'll be able to see everything. And the reason I, can, I love teaching it that way is it's going to be exactly how you see it and set it up in the real world. And the good news is by preparing for it that way, you'll also be prepared for your Cisco certification exam. So the last thing I'll mention on certification as a whole. Uh, Cisco exam expiration policies and renewal policies are awesome. Uh, they're unlike any other vendor in that Cisco has expirations on every single certification of three years. So what that means, hang on, let me grab my pen here. What that means is let's say you get a CCENT. Uh, you pass that one exam. You now have a CCENT that lasts for three years. So two years later, you know, you've got one year left on that. You pass a CCNA. This now lasts for three years and it renews this back to three years. So, you know, two years pass and, you know, hopefully you don't wait that long, but, you know, <laughs> these are all down to a one-year shelf life. You pass this guy, you now have a CCNA security lasting for three years, and it automatically renews all of these guys for three years. So they, they always get refreshed. So all your lower-level certs get a refresh. And it goes sideways as well. Let's say you've got a CCNP. You pass all those exams, three or four exams, depending on, like I said, it's being revised right now, whatever track you're talking about. Um, and that one ends up being a CCNP for three years. You then, two years later, pass one exam of your CCSP. Or let's even go this way. I, I love voice over IP as well. Uh, you pass one exam of this, it automatically renews this guy for three years. Um, so, so the good news is Cisco is not going to make you sit there and take exams you've already taken uh, again and again and again to renew your certification. They consider if you're going on and taking other exams that you're moving forward, and that should, and I, I fully agree with it, it should automatically renew all of your certifications. I'll tell you right now, I currently have uh, the CCIE in routing and switching. I've passed both the written and the lab exam for that. So I'm CCIE certified in routing and switching. But I also have uh, my CCVP, my CCNP, my CCSP, and, and a bunch not even shown here, like the design professional. I have the wireless, you know, and all, all of those kind of things. And if I had to retake those every three years, I would just, that's all I would do. I would have no life except taking exams. But all I have to do, now, now the CCIE, last uh, two years or stays active for two years I should say all I have to do every two years is pass the written again and actually I, I went this direction uh, this last time I passed the written for CCIE voice that qualifies me to go take the CCIE uh, voice lab which I still think about but uh, but I'm, I'm married now I have children now and uh, and so my 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 life is not as flexible as it used to be where I could just sit in in my Cisco world all day and and study for hours and hours and hours. So maybe I will. I don't know. I hope to, uh, but I hope to do a lot of things too. Um, so anyway, my point is that uh, I pass this written every two years and it renews everything. That was supposed to be a big circle. Everything uh, below it. So all my certifications get renewed for another three years that, that are below this, and it renews my CCIE uh, routing and switching, which I will never, ever, ever, ever let expire uh, because of the pain I went through to get that um, for another two years. And so it, it just keeps uh, working on and on. So the good news, and I will say the benefit of going in the Cisco certifica certification world is they encourage you to always move forward. Can you take the same exams you did? Sure. I've, I've done it plenty of times. I've had my CCIE for, what, six, six or seven years now? 
No, not that. Yeah, maybe five, five or six. How about five or six years? Um, so I've I've gone through and I said, well, you know, I haven't studied, so let me just take the written again for this, and and I've renewed everything for two years. So they they say you can take the same ones, but they encourage you. <laughs>